DTF has been supporting education reforms in the non-EU countries for many years now. Uh, but why the EU should help in education and training in, this, in the countries to the south and to the east of the EU? I think obviously for, for the EU it is a huge challenge to make sure that uh, education and uh, vocational uh, education training is upgraded in our uh, neighbourhood. Huh? If we are uh, consistent with all our neighbourhood strategy, this uh, of course needs to be uh, very high uh, on the agenda for many reasons. Uh, uh, and uh, as we very often say, uh, if we don't do it for them, let's do it for us. Huh? And I think it's a win-win situation to make sure that in these countries they, they can upgrade their education um, situation. We all know uh, regarding the structural uh, challenge these countries have to face uh, that um, the most difficult investment might be uh, education because it is a long-term investment. Uh, but is this also the one where you might have the best return also in the long term? This is also why an institution that has the ground and the basis as the EU uh, might be really uh, uh, the right one to, to do it. The President of the European Parliament wrote last week in the Financial Times uh, that in the 2011 budget, MEPs shifted priorities favoring among others, training and youth. Does it mean that there is a recognition that training and education is key to economic recovery and social cohesion? And can it have also implications for the work of the ETF? Well, uh, of course, when it comes to the EU budget, uh, it's at first uh, looking uh, uh, as an insider. Huh? And here uh, we need to go back to, to our 10 years experience, uh, even before the crisis, when uh, we had settled the Lisbon strategy, where obviously the education was going to be an important topic if we wanted to be uh, um, a knowledge-based uh, society. Um, and here, uh, something that, happened, that has happened that uh, uh, allows us to say that even before the crisis, um, the balance sheet of this strategy was not as good as we would have hoped. So, um, uh, recognizing that uh, this priority has not changed, uh, because the world is moving uh, so fast uh, and people are living uh, longer, uh, this uh, even becomes a, a strongest priority for education. It means it's true inside the EU and it means it's, just, it's right outside the EU. So this is why we need to change uh, priority inside our own budget and of course it will have an impact for, for ETF. Was there anything that you learned during this stay at the ETF and uh, that you would like to bring back to Brussels? No, the last visit by a delegation from the European Parliament to, uh, to Reno to visit the ETF was in 2006 and since then uh, there has been change uh, uh, in the regulation for ETF but also in, in the worldwide situation. Uh, so it's a good uh, time I think to come back here and to overview what's uh, going on. Um, all the discussion we had uh, up to now I think are very striking for, for uh, members of the committee that uh, the investment that's been done in education and vocational uh, education training um, is a critical issue. It's not going to be all, huh? but um, it, in the spirit of uh, what had been the um, uh, OSCE and the whole uh, atmosphere of uh, technical uh, uh, upgrade of the situation for, for partners uh, of the EU in the neighborhood. Um, I think for, for members it's been, it's been a very good program.